Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are A warm welcome to Miller Park here in Milwaukee. The Brewers hope to get their bats out as well as they take on the St. Louis Cardinals in game two of this series. Kyle Loesch on the hill for Milwaukee. They've lost some close ball games. They hope his arm can get them a victory tonight. And Carlos Gomez, he is surprising the entire league with what he has done with his bats so far on the season. Hi everybody, Craig Deshaun, Jerry Augustine back with you here on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Carlos Gomez from the bottom half of the order, the number seven hole for the most part, all of a sudden, Jerry, leading the league in batting at 372. How big a surprise is that? Oh, you have to be surprised. You know, baseball players learn about themselves at different times in their career. And I think what Carlos Gomez has done, he's gone out and found a lot about himself. He's a guy that goes out each and every day and does the right things. You look at what he's been doing, not a guy, aggressive guy by nature. He goes out, slows the game down, and I'm going to tell you, I have to be impressed how he hits the ball to all fields. Yeah, he's uh, got power to right field. And Carlos Gomez with five home runs on the season as well. 372 clip last year at this time through May 2nd, 292. And that was considered good because his career average is at 252. Big question is, where will he balance out? Well, I'll tell you what, each and every day his approach, you got to like it. And as I said earlier, what's so important about Carlos Gomez, he's found out about himself. He's not overly aggressive in the ball game anymore. He's learned to slow the game down take what he's given, and hit the ball to all fields, and that's been a big difference. All right, Carlos Gomez back in the lineup tonight. Brewers also getting a boost in that lineup. We'll talk about that, but Kyle Loesch looks to get some hitting from Gomez, turn those into runs. B.A. and Rock explain as we get closer to first pitch on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Wisconsin is brought to you by Menards. Save big money and all your home improvement needs at Menards. By Miller Lite, it's not just a good time, it's Miller time. By Toyota, let's go places. 
and by AT&T UVerse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. Foul line cam here at Miller Park. We are almost ready for baseball. Kyle Loesch on the hill. Here's B.A. and Rock to talk starting pitching. All right, thanks a lot, Craig. And we're looking forward to this matchup tonight. It's always entertaining when you get the Brewers and the Cardinals together. Cardinals winning last night. The Brewers have put up a valiant effort to come back. But I think the entertainment stakes are a little higher when you have a guy like Kyle Loesch on the mound. He felt like he was shunned by the Cardinals last year. He didn't get the contract he was looking for. Now he's a Brewer. Now he's matching up for the second time against St. Louis. And facing a guy that replaced him in rotation. But we look at the numbers for Kyle Loesch. He should be 5-0 and this year. He's pitched beautifully in all five of his starts. Unfortunately, his two losses, the Brewers have been shut out 2 to nothing. He was very good his last time out against Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers in a 2 to nothing loss. You know every time that he goes out there, he's amped up. But you got to figure against the Cardinals, it means a little bit more to him than just another start. Lowe should be matching up against Shelby Miller, who dominated the Brewers in his last start against him in his only career start against Milwaukee. we got baseball coming up. Line up to the first pitch. It's the Brewers on a retro Friday against the St. Louis Cardinals. Game two is next. Kyle Loesch, great to have you with us tonight. We're set for game two of this four-game series on a retro Friday inside Miller Park. It is cold and rainy outside Miller Park, but very comfortable inside here. The roof is all closed up, as are the panels, and Mike Matheny and the Cardinals back in town. St. Louis uh, winning yesterday 6-5. to five. Brewers had a late comeback, had a chance to win at the end. Cardinals came up big at the end with their new closer, Edward Mujica. Piggly Wiggly batting order for the Redbirds tonight. It's Carpenter, Beltron, and Holiday. Craig Molina and Freeze in the middle with John Jay, Pete Cosma, and Shelby Miller rounding it out. Well, Kyle Loesch on the mound making his sixth start. The Brewers are two and three in his starts. But in his three losses, the Brewers have scored a combined one run. We talked about on the open his two losses, both of them shutouts. And the Menards defense behind Lowe's. Very important to have solid defense. Lowe's a ground ball pitcher. Aramis Ramirez back in the lineup. He missed 23 games with that strained left knee. And all reports are good on Aramis. So the Brewers are starting to get their players back from the disabled list. Now that is one of the big stories here tonight. Ramirez returning to the starting lineup. And we'll see how long he'll be able to play in this game. Renicki's thinking maybe five to seven innings. Ramirez says he's good for all nine. <laughs> We'll see who wins out tonight. It's a big bat. 
for the Brewers to get back. That is Dale Scott, the crew chief. He's calling the balls and strikes. Bill Miller, C.B. Buckner, and Todd Tishner on the bases. And the stage is set here for game two of this four-game series. The Brewers are in the middle of a nine-game homestand, welcoming in the Rangers next Tuesday and Wednesday. So they're facing some very good teams here on this homestand, and so far they're two and two. First pitch from Loesch in there, strike one, and off we go tonight. Expecting a big crowd. They're still filing in here. A little treacherous out on the highways today with all of the rain and the cold weather. But expecting a, a big crowd, a near sellout here tonight at Miller Park. And it's quickly 0-2 on Matt Carpenter. Brewers have their... Uh, their ball and glove hats on with the yellow panels up front. This is a, a new look for Milwaukee. These are the caps they've been wearing during batting practice. Old school look here for the Milwaukee Brewers. I like it. Yeah, these are the uh, old school road caps with the yellow, gold, whatever you want to call them, panels. Just missing those uh, those gray road uniforms. That's a good look. I like that hat. That's a retro Friday. The Brewers do it once a month. Go back to the ball and glove logo. And a little different color pattern. Oh, and two to Carpenter is fouled off again. Let's take a look at the mechanics of Kyle Loesch, Rock. Man, yeah, classic windup, taking an awful lot of pressure off the shoulder and the elbow. Look at the way he uses his legs. High leg kick drives off of that pitching rubber and really uses his legs to, you know, really shoulder most of the burden in that delivery. Another 0 2, and that one's bounced over to Betancourt, and he bobbles, shovels to Loesch, and not in time. Loesch couldn't get the foot on the bag. Betancourt going over to first base tonight now that Ramirez is back, and right away he scuffles with a routine ground ball. I mean, it turned, it started out as a play that Betancourt wanted to take himself. I think that's why he bobbled the baseball. Wanted to get in the glove and go over to first base a little bit too quickly. You saw him pick his head up, and then Loesch couldn't find the bag with his foot. He just got out of rhythm there. Looked like he might have beaten Carpenter to the bag. This will be the definitive look here. Bang, bang. It's too close to call, but well, Los not able to get the baseball with his foot on the bag. That cost him the out. And here is Carlos Beltran now. You can see this Mike Matheny batting order that has been shuffled since the last time the Brewers saw the Cardinals in St. Louis. It uh, paid off in a big way last night, but he has. John Jay, who has been his leadoff hitter, hitting down in the order. Jay's hitting seven tonight. He's got Carpenter leading off, and he's bumped up some of his big sluggers, his run producers, like Beltron, up into the lineup a little bit. Fly ball to Aoki. And there is the first out for Kyle Loesch. And Beltron historically has really hit Kyle Loesch very well. 23 for 42 for Beltron against Loesch with four homers. So that's a big out for Loesch early on. Well, here is Matt Holiday now. now. During the Tony La Russa years, he always had a, a slugger, a run producer with home run power in the two hole. For many years, it was Ryan Ludwig. And Matheny's kind of going back to that trend here with Beltron batting second, and that sets up Holiday, who hits third. Not putting up Matt Holiday kind of numbers, but. By all means, a major weapon in the middle of that Cardinals, Cardinals order. I mean, it's early yet. You know, Holiday is going to end up by the end of the season with his around 300, 100 RBIs. He's done it just about every year. Holiday took the collar last night. He was 0 for 4, struck out twice. Cardinals scored all six of their runs in one inning last night. All of those runs belonged to Willie Peralta. Frustrating night for Willie. An early exit for him after four to third. But the Brewers scored five unanswered. They came all the way back. They were right on the doorstep of taking the lead late and potentially winning the game late. Just couldn't quite come up with that big hit. And when it was all said and done, the Cardinals won it six to five. The Brewers stranded 13 runners on base last night. Yeah, but they're able to uh, put a hurting on the Cardinals bullpen, and that's uh, what you have to do against this club. They're starters. Have been very good so far. Get him out of the game and work on that bullpen that struggled so far this year. 
Cardinals made a transaction. They designated Mitchell Boggs for assignment, so he's off their major league roster. And the Cardinals called up Carlos Martinez from their minor league system, a hard throwing right handed pitcher who's been starting down in the minor leagues. The wave of arms continues for Mike Matheny. Boy, they have some impressive high level pitching that are all major league ready, and those who aren't here are uh, close to coming. And now Martinez is soon to be making his uh, Cardinals debut this season. And just another example of how difficult it is for relievers to string together very good seasons. I mean, Boggs, a very good setup man. He was given the opportunity to close, just couldn't do it. They've gotten his head, and he's no longer with the club. I mean, we're only in early May. Now Cardinals last week sent down Mark Zepchinski, a very talented left-hander who was a big part of their World Series championship team in 2011. He's back in the minor leagues. So they've done some rearranging here, but they continue to set the pace in the National League Central. Cardinals are 17 and 11 coming into play tonight. Carpenter reaching on an error. That's how the game began. And now Holiday in a battle here with Loesch. One ball, two strikes. And a bouncer to short. Got a chance to turn it. Segura to second. Weeks to first. In time. Double play. Matt Holiday leads the National League in double plays grounded into. And Loesch gets one here in the first to wipe away the error. Brewers coming to bat. Going old school tonight. Great to have you with us on a Friday. We're underway at Miller Park. Kyle Loesch working a scoreless first inning. Now Ron Renneke ready to turn it over against right-hander Shelby Miller, who pitched seven brilliant innings against the Brewers in St. Louis. Here's his batting order today, brought to you by Higley Wiggly with Aoki Segura and Braun, Ramirez, Weeks, and Lucroy Gomez, the league's leading hitter, Betancourt and Loesch. Now Shelby Miller 10th in the National League and earned run average at 2.05. He lost to the Pirates his last time out. Five and two thirds and three runs. A strikeout pitcher is Shelby Miller averaging over nine and a half strikeouts per nine innings. And Miller throwing mostly fastballs against the Brewers in that start in St. Louis. And, uh, talking to some of the Brewer hitters after that game. You know, he didn't have the big 97, 98 mile an hour fastball. He was consistently 92 to 95. But those guys were talking about the finishing kick he had on it. As Aoki turns that one around, Beltron is back. It's over his head. And Aoki will have to hold up. It'll be a long single. If you were with us last night, we talked about at length how deep Matheny plays his outfielders and that's the reason why right there. Yeah cutting off the uh, slugging percentage from Milwaukee. 
Well, making you get three singles to score a run as opposed to a couple of doubles. And when you play that deep, you're not going to be able to get too many extra base hits. Well, Nori Aoki is starting to heat up a little bit. It's amazing what a day off does for Aoki. A couple of days ago, he got the day off yesterday with a couple of doubles. Well, he looks like he's got some life in his bat. So a man on for Gene Segura. Segura comes in with a batting average of 347. He's up there among league leaders as well. He checks in third in the league in batting. Gomez leads the National League, then Chris Johnson of the Braves, and then Gene Segura. Now well, the Menards defense for the Cardinals, the third best defense in the National League. In large part due to up the middle. Pete Cosma has committed only one error. And this is 27th game and the Cardinals are third in the National League and double plays they've turned 29 of them. Well, the Cardinals. Have been a very good defensive team but it is interesting that Daniel Descalso who's not a starter has five of their errors this year. And he made one last night so. They're probably even better than their numbers look with the, the players who play the most defensively. Descalso, kind of a role player. See him start every now and then. He's, he's in a real funk defensively. And made an error last night. There's that fastball that gave the Brewers fits. And Miller kept his fastball in the upper half of the strike zone all day against the Brewers in St. Louis. They must hide it pretty well because the Brewers weren't able to square it up all that often. Up there, that's what you're talking about. 94 that time, and blowing it right by Gene Segura. Now Miller, he throws a curveball and a changeup, but you're going to see a lot of these pitches right there from Shelby Miller. High fastball. So the first out is a strikeout for Shelby Miller, 22 year old Texan. He's from Brownwood, Texas, Central Texas. But a Cardinals first round draft pick in 2009. It was a pretty quick rise to the big leagues for Shelby Miller. First arrived in the big leagues last year and. He made one start last season for St. Louis. As Braun out to second. And a 4 6 3 double play and just like Loesch, Shelby Miller ends the first with a two ball. Cardinals Brewers and when the Brewers win you win for every win this month will knock one dollar off the price of a terrorist box ticket 
for the June 3rd through 5th series against the Oakland A's. The more games the Brewers win, the more you save. Visit Brewers.com slash win-win for details. Well, that's going to be a tour through the American League West in interleague play this year for the Brewers. They will match up against the Rangers for a home-and-home. Home. They'll have the A's. Going to go to Seattle this year for the first time in a long time. And, of course, the Houston Astros. Hard to think about them in the West, though. Alan Craig shoots one through the hole for a base hit. Second, our first Cardinal hit. Second base runner for St. Louis. And Craig is aboard to start this second inning. Man, this Cardinals ball club, they always seem to be able to put the bat on the baseball. And this is why you see a lot of base hits that aren't hit all that hard. A lot of teams swing and miss. The Cardinals make contact. And you can see Ramirez, the range, not what it's going to be, you hope, in the next couple of weeks. Still not 100% with that mobility. Well, Ramirez returning after missing a month with a left knee injury. Did that sliding into second base. Played in just four games for the Brewers, and it was the second time he injured that knee. He hurt it in spring training and missed two weeks. And this was a Friday earlier in the season, the first Friday of the season against the Diamondbacks. And you see that Ramirez, he actually slides with the wrong leg or the opposite leg. Most guys have the other leg forward. And because of that, Ramirez, he can't change it. It's such a habit for him. He tried, actually. <laughs> to slide with the other leg forward, but it's instinct. You it, can't. I mean, if he, you end up in a pile. It puts a lot of stress on that left knee as it gets tucked under. And you think about the way you run the bases. You know, it's it's like NASCAR. Everybody goes left. You ever tried brushing your teeth with the left hand? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of the way it would be if he slid the other way. It'd be a mess. Yadier Molina sends one high in the air up the pipe, foul territory. Lucroy makes the catch for the out, and Molina is retired. And kind enough to hand Lucroy all of his equipment back. First out of the inning. Well, what are your expectations of Aramis Ramirez? And the fact he didn't go on a minor league rehab, it's not specifically Ramirez's decision. They all talked about right. the pros and cons, but he felt like it was important to just get back to action here in the big leagues he's missed enough time he said yeah not many guys are going to be able to take just basically what is a month off and you know take batting practice and you know feel as though they're ready but I mean Ramirez is a a veteran guy he knows what it takes to get ready I would imagine that he knows what's best for him but you know he's going to be able to take it easy somewhat defensively but you know my concern is when he starts running the bases mm -hmm. and you get on the bases and you you're trying to score and in particular maybe when he tries to slide Something that he has not done, you know, in pregame workouts. Mm -hmm. Now, Mark, what are the expectations of Ron Renneke concerning Aramis Ramirez tonight? Well, B.A., two big questions here. First, is Rami 100%? Rami told me, no, he's not 100%, but he's ready to go full speed. That most guys play hurt for stretches of 162-game season. Second, Rock touched on this. With no minor league rehab, how is he going to do against live pitching for the first time in a month? Rami said he's been around a long time and he knows what he needs to do to get back to full speed. Now freeze into the gap and he'll slide into second with a double. So the Cardinals putting up a threat here in the second inning. David Freeze now with three hits in this series. He had been 0 for 16 prior to this series. Something about that Brewers uniform that uh, gets David Freeze going. And Gomez doing the best he can to get there and get that ball into second base, but Freeze never slowed down around first base. A perfect throw, he might be out, but that's a long throw to put right on the bag. So Freeze is in with a double, second and third now with one away, and John Jay coming up. Brewers are going to bring their corner infielders in, Ramirez and Betancourt. They'll concede the run on a ground ball to the middle infielders. And just the last thought about Ramirez, I think it has mostly to do with his offense, but Aramis Ramirez has always had good success against the Cardinals, and just the threat is there no matter where he is. It's the same with Matt Holliday, who's a struggling hitter, but the threat of Matt Holliday is certainly front and central with the Brewer pitching staff. And the same goes for Ramirez, and I think he knows that. And that's why he wanted to come back without a minor league rehab assignment. And I think the guy that will benefit most from the return of Aramis Ramirez will be Ryan Braun. With Ramirez out, they were pitching around Braun quite a bit. 
you know, intentional walks. I don't see them doing that with Aramis back in there. One ball, one strike on John Jay. Chops it foul. But I would have not figured that Ramirez is going to be playing every day right away. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe get a next day off Sunday. Team off day on Monday, allow him to recuperate. It'll be a while before he's in the lineup every day. Now the Brewers are excited to have him back. And now next step is to get Corey Hart back in the starting lineup. That won't be for about a month. The one two and Jade lays off close pitch. Cardinals have always liked John Jay at the plate and they loved him at, in the leadoff spot. But this year just not getting on base enough. To uh, warrant the position as the leadoff hitter his on base percentage is just 290. And down he goes. Loesch pulled the string on him. A changeup. A dandy. And John Jay is retired. First strikeout for Kyle Loesch. Yep, just missed with the fastball on the outside corner of the pitch before, and then comes back with a changeup. And wants to tumble on that pitch, going away from Jay and down in the strike zone. And that is a huge strikeout for Kyle Loesch. You can be careful here with Cosma. You got the pitcher coming up. And we'll see how aggressive. Los will be against the eighth place hitter, the young shortstop, Pete Cosma. And he deals him strike one, according to Dale Scott. Well, you see the Cardinals, what they've done with two outs, tied for fourth in the major leagues, scoring runs with two outs. All six of their runs last night came with two outs. And the Cardinals have the best batting average with uh, runners in scoring position and two outs. They're up over 340 now with runners in scoring position and two outs. And that's the situation here for Pete Cosmo. No, and again, you know, that's a function of making contact. And the Cardinals have struck out the fewest times of any offense in the National League. So when you put the ball in play, normally you're going to have good numbers in those spots. On that big six run inning yesterday, the Cardinals had six runs on seven hits and a hit batter, all with two away in the inning. Loesch has him 0-2, and he doesn't bite. Cosma and a ball and two strikes. Cosma drove in a pair in that six run inning yesterday. He was one for three, also drew a walk. Excellent defensive shortstop. Good cut. Loesch might have gotten away with one there. Second go around for Loesch against his former team, the St. Louis Cardinals. Yep, actually going right after the number eight hitter. Well, you hate to make a mistake in this spot with a pitcher standing in the on deck circle. One ball, two strikes, second and third for the Cardinals. And Cosmo over to third. Ramirez bobbles. Throw to first. He is just in time. So a little rusty on the game. Aramis Ramirez. Los gets out of it. Ramirez leads off.
At Miller Park, Brewers Cardinals division rivals. And our carsuit.com email the booth question tonight comes from Bert in Waukesha. Rock, should a player always have a rehab assignment in the minor leagues after an injury? I guess the answer to that is no, right? I guess it depends on how long you've been out and what you were able to do while you were on the disabled list. You know, in the case of Aramis, wasn't able to do much, couldn't throw, really couldn't run a whole lot because the nature of his injury. But with respect to Aramis, in my opinion on that, I'll let you know at the end of this series. <laughs> we'll see how it goes today. <laughs> I mean, most players, we saw it in, uh, in Los Angeles with Hanley Ramirez of the Dodgers. He wanted to stay in the big leagues. He didn't want to go to the minor leagues on a rehab. Sometimes that can become a bit of a sideshow right. um, with autographs. And not that these players are against autographs, but you get them in a minor league setting and and I believe me I've been there and when we had guys come down on minor league rehab it was a big deal and you'd usually sell out and right. there'd be opportunities that they feel like they have to uh, to take care of and you know you got to buy the spreads right, and right. all those things that go a part of it but the Dodgers flat out told Hanley Ramirez tough you're going to go down for three games you're going right. to play in the minor leagues yeah, it can be a distraction but again I mean every player is different Ramos feels as though that he didn't need to go down there. I remember when I went on minor league rehab, it was great for the gates down in the minor leagues. Oh, yeah. Leagues. Big crowds and uh, fanfare, parades. Are you kidding me? And you got a little concerned when the ticket was a one-way ticket. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I thought it was five days, not five months. Rock, we're, we're going to start by calling this a minor league rehab. And we then want, after that, you're on your we own. We want you to take it easy. We don't want you uh, peeking too soon. <laughs> don't rush back. <laughs> well, Ramirez has earned that right, I guess. Three balls and a strike. And it goes to three and two on the foul tip. Well, Aramis was off to a great start. That was uh, one of the, the disappointing factors of his injury. He has always been a slow starter. But this year, that was not the case. He was out to a terrific start. He was hitting 385 at the time of his injury. And he yanks that one in the hole. No minor league rehab necessary. Take that, Bert. A base hit his first time up. <laughs> I guess that answers my question to Bert. <laughs> Bert trying to stir it up on our carsuit.com email the booth question, and Ramirez answers a big question early. And you see the fastball down. It was over the plate, and you know the effective fastball for Shelby Miller ordinarily the belt and above, and. Ramirez gets one down the middle around the knees and bangs it into left field. And now here will be the most watched uh, trip around the bases for Ramirez as Ricky Weeks steps in. Ron Renicki told us earlier that he has asked Ramirez to only slide if absolutely necessary. So you might see Ramirez. On a routine ground ball, and they go to second, they just peel off and run around. You right, might not right. see him slide in every uh, in every case, and that's on orders from his manager. But like you said, Rock, instincts take over at some point. You just play the game the way you've always played it. Right, and sometimes it's tough to shut off when you're trying to break up a double play. You're trying to take an extra base. And when you're going half speed, a lot of times that's when you do get hurt. That's right. You know, Renicky would love nothing more than for Ricky Weeks to hit one in the seats here. They could both jog around. Yesterday, Ricky Weeks felt like he was in a good groove at the plate. He had two hits. He drew a walk in yesterday's game. And he took a lot of pitches, and I think that's when you start to see Ricky Weeks maybe coming out of this long slump he has been a very patient hitter and even last year when he wasn't really hitting he was taking his walks but Ricky ordinarily is very patient early in the count he gets to expanding his strike zone with two strikes and a lot of hitters are guilty of that Weeks has had a nice homestand he is currently five for 14 on the homestand that includes a home run and five runs batted in all five of those RBIs came in the same game against the Pirates a career day four weeks. First time around against the Cardinals he was three for 16 in that three game series in St. Louis. 
That was part of the first road trip of the season. Hitters count and Weeks fouls it back. He figured this was going to be a good matchup for Weeks in St. Louis. He was uh, matching up against a pitcher who uses a lot of fastballs. More fastballs by percentage than most other pitchers in the major leagues. He's using his fastball about 75, 76 percent of the time. I don't think he's thrown a curveball yet. Curveballs, changeups, maybe uh, one or two. That's it. Three, two, and Weeks sends Allen to right field. Back is Beltron with room, and he's got it for the first out of the inning. Two pitchers that go about it in much different ways. And our charter high speed pitch so far. Miller topping out at 97. And Kyle Loesch at 92. Loesch with two scoreless innings. Giving up a couple of hits. Stranded two last inning. And here's Jonathan Lucroy now. Lucroy with one away and Ramirez at first. Lucroy did not start last night. He did pinch hit. He was the last out last night. He came to the plate representing the winning run in the ninth inning. Lucroy three for 13 on the homestand. He's going through a tough time at the plate right now. And again, a guy that uh, when he struggles, ordinarily he's going to put the bat on the baseball. And strike out a whole lot. Early in the season was rolling over on, on a lot of pitches and a lot of six to three putouts. He hasn't been doing much of that lately. Using up the middle into the opposite field much more. Lucroy hits it hard to right. Beltron at the track. He's got it. And the Cardinals deep outfield play turns into routine outs. You know, those baseballs leave the bat. You think an extra base hit as a hitter, but. The only other team I know that plays as deep in the outfield is the Minnesota Twins. Ron Gardenhire's style is to play very deep and cut off the extra base hit. And they started that about three, four years ago. And the first team really that you noticed was playing extremely deep against the Brewers, cutting off that slugging percentage, making the Brewers come up with three hits as opposed to the extra base hit. Here's Gomez. The National League's leading hitter hitting seventh in the batting order for the Brewers. I mean, John Jay in center field is nearly on the warning track. And Holiday very deep, and Beltron the same. So a lot of room in front of these outfielders, but you know, a single's not going to score a run in this situation with two outs and a man at first base. And that's why they play deep with two outs. They're playing deep all the time, but every team is going to play a little bit deeper with two outs and a man at first base. Well, you can almost tell, especially in left field with Holiday, you can see a little bit of a worn patch where where the the left fielder typically stands. And Holiday is a good five six steps behind that as Miller deals strike two to Gomez. Now that's where you normally stand. Not right here. Not in that area right there. Two outs with Ramirez at first, a leadoff single. And Gomez to right field. Beltron on the run, cannot get there. He'll cut it off. And it'll be first and third for the Brewers. Gomez just keeps on hitting. This guy is on a tear. So impressive to see what he has done at the plate this year. And the big difference between Gomez now and throughout his career using right field very effectively. And 
able to dump that one down the line even with the deep Carlos Beltran not able to score from first base as Ramirez. Ramos uh, not running all that well around the bases kind of hobbling into third base. So Ramirez ends up at third first and third now with two gone. Gomez now with 36 hits on the season that is third best in the National League. Gomez takes off and a swing and a miss and no throw by Molina nobody covered. Some confusion in the middle infield for the Cardinals. I think that's by design I think with two outs they are going to let Gomez steal. Cover as much ground as they can particularly on the first pitch the Betancourt. Then for a notorious first ball hitter. Good jump. Fast base runner and don't even bother covering cover the ground and protect against the, the base hit. Stolen base number seven for Gomez. That's fourth best in the league and now Betancourt with a base hit could bring in two. And now it's second and third and two outs you see the outfield coming in just a bit. For St. Louis. Trying to cut that, that down that run at second. I don't see him doing it with Gomez at second, though. Bedencore has been up in a big spot quite a bit this season. He's hitting eighth tonight. Renicke's uh, dropped him back down in the order. Into center field. Sounded like it was off the end of the bat. Jay coming in. He's got it. And the side is retired. So the Brewers strand runners at second and third. No score from Miller Park. Move to the top of the third here at Miller Park. Mark got counted back at the stadium, and pitchers have routines that they follow between starts. And for Kyle Loesch, part of that routine is a family affair. When he starts a home game on the day before that start, he is going to bring his son Cameron to the ballpark every day before he starts. Now Cameron puts on a glove. He'll throw the ball around with Dad. He'll watch Dad take a little BP. He'll take a few cuts himself. He'll die for grounders, die for pop flies. And Kyle told me it's a great way to put, spend a lot of quality time with his son. And guys, how about those memories for that little guy going to the ballpark with his dad? Yeah, nothing like fathers and sons at the old ballpark, right? Yeah. And relaxing dad in the same. Uh, you know, keep killing two birds with one stone, right? Got to tighten up Cam's defense a little bit. Yeah, it kind of looked like uh, Craig Deshaun out there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Shelby Miller leads off for St. Louis. Now Brewers are very a uh, family friendly organization. They've been that way since uh, Mark Adonacio took over the team and I think uh, it's it's one of the reasons there are many but it's one of the reasons that 
the Brewers have been able to have so much success on the free agent market recently. And I remember Trevor Hoffman talking about that and uh, having his kids out to the ballpark and they do have their parameters. They know when it's time to go to work when it's when it's business and then they close off the clubhouse. But uh, what a great experience to be able to share that with your dad. Yeah, especially when dad is gone half the summer right. right. Two balls two strikes on uh, Miller. And down he goes Loesch makes quick work of him. Second strikeout for Kyle Loesch. Hey, tonight's time of the game winner, the place in Norwalk, Wisconsin, if they call the Brewers in the next 24 hours. The place gets 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a Brewers home game this year. This offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. One gone back to the top of the order for the Redbirds, and it'll be Matt Carpenter. Reaching on an error in the first inning. But Loesch wiped it out with a double play on Matt Holiday to end that first. The first uh, two innings for each offense very similar. Double plays in the first. Two runners stranded in scoring position in the second for both teams. Although the Cardinals had runners at second and third with just one out in their half of the second. One and two on Carpenter. Lucroy back in the starting role tonight. Maldonado caught Peralta last night. And Carpenter rips it to right field. Aoki plays it safe and it's going to get by him. Carpenter on his way to second. Well, Aoki plays very deep himself, and he chose to play it back. I thought he probably had a chance at a catch, but he didn't want the ball to get to the wall, but it ends up there anyway. Yeah, probably a hit and an error. Second error of the night for Milwaukee. Kind of let the ball play. If he keeps going, I think he might be able to make a shoestring catch. Are they going to give him a double? Yeah, scored as a double. So Carpenter at second, and here is Beltron now. Beltron flew out to right in the first inning. He's off to a nice start. He has seven homers, 18 runs batted in. He's in the top 10 in home runs. They got off to a great start last year. Kind of fizzled a bit at the end, but. All in all, a good season for Beltran. Off to a good one again this year. Beltran was out in front. Segura will make the call and the catch. Effortless shortstop in Gene Segura makes him look easy. And a great speed, a good first step, and a much easier play for Segura than. Ramirez, so that's a big out for Loach in that Beltron not able to get the runner to third base. That Loach will face Matt Holiday now. Holiday bounced into a double play in the first inning. Loach struck out Miller to start the frame, and now two gone for Holiday with Carpenter, who has decent speed at second base. Brewers would love to get the Cardinals out of town before Holiday gets hot. Very similar story what we saw last series in Andrew McCutcheon and the Pirates. McCutcheon ended up with a four hit game. Holiday when he gets going he's about as tough of an out as there is and he hits everything. And it's that that same old debate with Matt Holiday. It goes the same with Ryan Braun. You know you have to pitch him inside. He has to right. establish the inside part of the plate. But if you miss barely, Holiday is going to put it into the seats. And you better have something on it if you're going to miss just a little bit. Kyle Lowe does not have that luxury.
And that pitch right there was right in Holiday's wheelhouse, which kind of backs up what you've just been talking about, not swinging the bat like he can. That's normally a pitch that he's going to drive somewhere. Now, most of the things you're saying about Ryan Braun right now, as far as the start to the season, you can say about Holiday. The batting average is low at 250, but he's hitting 478 with runners in scoring position this year. He has Carpenter out there now, and Holiday takes a ball. Yikes. Los was headed for the dugout. He thought the inning was over. Dale Scott didn't see it that way. And yeah, missed by maybe what an inch. Half an inch. Good eye. Try to go out there again. Holiday doesn't bite. And it's three and two now. That batting average with. Runners in scoring position for Holiday is the fourth best in the National League. So while he is hitting 250, he has made his hits count, much like Braun has this year. And that's why Holiday with, with 16 runs batted in. Payoff pitch. Holiday sends it deep to center field. And that one's not coming back. Wow. Matt Holiday bangs it off the scoreboard, and the Cardinals have a two to nothing lead. They had him struck out, didn't get the call, and another couple of pitches later, a home run. Well, Holiday got a pitch out away from him, and he drove it deep out there into center field. Wow. Well, that's about as hard as you can hit a baseball. Wow, that is something. Good thing the scoreboard got in the way. So Holiday with home run number four gives him 18 runs batted in, and he continues to impress with runners in scoring position this year. And now Craig follows with a base hit. Over to cut it off is Braun. He'll hold Craig to a single. The third hit in the inning. Back to back hits for St. Louis. Craig is two for two. Good idea for John and Luke Craig. Go out there to settle down Kyle Lowe's. who a bit rattled after that home run, thinking he had Matt Holiday struck out. Gives up the home run, and Alan Craig now with two hits. And that'll bring up Yadier Molina, who homered off Loesch in St. Louis earlier this season. The home run ball has been a bit of a problem for Loesch lately. Gave up two in Los Angeles to Carl Crawford. And has now given up a home run tonight in the third inning. Crawford twice, Matt Holliday just a moment ago, and the other home run allowed was Molina back in St. Louis on April 12th. I always wonder how a catcher will respond as a hitter to a guy he is so familiar with. Molina was Loesch's catcher for so many years in St. Louis. He knows everything he wants to do when he wants to do it. Right. But the perspective changes from the batter's box. Well, it's always one of those I know that you know that I know type of deals and you know Lewis is really not going to change up what he tries to do and sometimes you, you can out guess yourself up there at the plate when you've caught a guy for so long. Three balls and a strike on Molina. Now Molina has long been the best catcher in the game defensively has the gold gloves to show for it. But now he's added that offensive threat as well for the last few seasons, and he's having his best offensive year to start a season. Lines out and pass Ramirez at third. This is going to get down in the corner. 
And Braun over to cut it off. Craig's going to try to score. Here comes the play. Segura's throw to the plate. One hop. The tag. He is out at home. Perfect relay. Braun to Segura to Lucroy. And the inning ends at home plate. Nice play by Lucroy on a short hop. Two nothing Cardinals. Kyle Loesch coming up to the plate and he's looking to knock off his former team for the first time this season and also even the series. So tonight on our AT&T Twitter poll we're asking Brewers fans which team do you most want to see the Brewers beat? Loesch obviously wants to beat the Cardinals here tonight. So is it the Cardinals, the Cubs or write in another team of your choice and Brian fans can tweet us at FS Wisconsin. We always love to hear from them. We'll get updates later in the game. All right Sophia thanks. Yeah, always encourage you to get interactive with us. On our broadcast, got a great crowd tonight, pushing a sellout this evening. And the Cardinals on a Matt Holiday home run now lead it 2 nothing as Loesch leads off for the Brewers here in the bottom of the third inning. Well, a great play to end the last inning, Rock. A perfect relay executed by the Brewers. Braun to Segura. And a very nice pickup by right. Jonathan Lucroy on a pretty tough hop. But Segura gave him a pretty good hop. It wasn't like an in-between hop. Either want to give a short hop or a long hop to the catcher. Gave him a, a long hop, and it all started with Ryan Braun. If he doesn't hit Segura in stride, they're not going to be able to make that play. And Ryan Braun gets it quickly all the way into the air to Segura, perfectly to Segura. And the big arm and a good hop to handle for Luke Croy and an easy out. Doesn't get much better than that. But it all starts with that guy right there on the cutoff. And Braun, you take his defense for granted because of how he hits, but he knows that left field corner as well as anyone playing so many games here. He played the perfect bounce. And, you know, you really didn't think about it in, until Braun was out for a couple of games. And saw Chris Davis out there. Saw Logan Schaefer. And those guys just haven't had the experience. There are some tricky bounces down in that left field corner. And Braun knows them all. Him yeah, being out there and... You know, all the times that he's played those caroms in the corner. Every stadium's different. Left field much different than right field. And he plays it well and he makes a good throw into the infield and they get the out. That's a big out. By the way, the official uh, ruling on Molina's hit is a double. He like to keep the scorebook at home. Man. Kyle Loesch within maybe, what, a quarter of an inch from right ringing up. Matt Holiday and ends up giving up a couple of runs and it could have been more had it not been for this play right here and you can see 
Lukoy keeping his mask on. That's a smart thing to do these days. A lot of guys do that. Back in the old days, it was all take the mask off. And now Lowe's rung up on a pitch very similar to the one he thought he had Matt Holiday rung up on. Yeah, well, mind you ringing me up, but where was that in the top of the inning? Right at the bottom of the zone, says Dale Scott. You can tell that really bugged Loesch. I mean, he he's a guy who has meticulous command, and when he puts a certain pitch in an area where he thinks he's got a guy struck out, it doesn't get the call. And he's gotten that call already in this game. Scott has a you know a pretty big zone compared to most umpires, but not on that occasion. And that bugged him for a few pitches, and Holiday got him with that two-run homer. You know, you know the mindset of you know Kyle Loesch, who in his two losses, the Brewers have been shut out both times. He knows that his margin for error is not real great, so that two-run home run that stung him a little bit. Thought he was out of the inning, but ended up giving up a couple of runs, and then got rung up on a borderline pitch. And don't discount the influence that Yadi or Molina has back there behind home plate, the way he receives the baseball and. You know, his presence back there once in a while is going to get a call. Lori Aoki with his second hit. Yeah, so the Brewers leadoff hitter with a couple of knocks against Shelby Miller. Hey, this Sunday, the Brewers take on these Cardinals at 1.10 p.m. All fans in attendance get a Corey Hart bobblehead compliments of Quick Trip. Visit Brewers.com for tickets. Corey sporting the old. Uh, Brewers 1913 uniform part of the American Association. Looking good in all white. Celebrating the 100th anniversary of that much publicized American Association championship. I'm not even sure they had a parade, but we're bringing it back, Rock. Much publicized. <laughs> much fanfare. It is now, though. Yes. I mean, I think that's the whole idea. We're trying to. To recreate some of those moments and, and go back into Milwaukee baseball history. Some of the key moments uh, during the franchise history as we send it down to Mark. B.A. that 1913 team captivated this city. They were so big when they came back from a successful West Coast road trip. This is just in the middle of the season. At the railway depot, there were thousands of fans to welcome them home. This was big stuff, and then they won the minor league World Series that year. They beat the Denver Grizzlies four games to two. So the Milwaukee Brewers, a hundred years ago, were pretty hot as boys of summer. <laughs> nice. I think there's some embellishing going on there to believe. What was the West Coast trip? Was that like Des Moines, Iowa? <laughs> Denver. He just said Denver, right? All the way from Denver. Yeah. The Denver Grizzlies. Segura, a 1-1 one, one count. Now the American Association no longer exists, actually. There used to be uh, three AAA leagues all the way up until the early 90s. Actually, the mid-90s it finally disbanded. Now there are two AAA leagues. The Pacific Coast League, which goes all the way to Nashville, believe it or not. And then you have the International League along the... Uh, the East Coast mostly. I was talking to uh, Yuke the other day about Borchard Field and yeah. where the uh, Brewers and the American Association played. He said uh, had some good times over there at Borchard Field. I would imagine you can only imagine what Yuke means by good times. Yeah. Borchard Field is now you know you get to Locust on 43 going north. Uh -huh. That's where that was. The freeway runs right over the top of where Borchard Field used to be. A lot of good baseball over at Borchard Field back in the day. And, uh, you know, the Brewers, as far as a, a baseball city, and they were known as the Brewers. And then when Bud Selig brought the Seattle Pilots back to Milwaukee, brought Major League Baseball back to Milwaukee after the Braves had occupied uh, Milwaukee here in the National League, that was the name he wanted. He wanted to, to recreate. Obviously, the Braves weren't available, so he wanted to recreate some of the baseball history here, and that's why he went with the Brewers. As Dale Scott rings up Gene Segura. Well, there's another outside corner fastball that has got the Brewers dugout barking a little bit. I mean, this pitch 
is a little further out than the Loesch pitch last inning. Yeah. Well, it's been a uh, a fluid strike zone so far tonight for Dale Scott. You have to make adjustments. The Borchard Field built in 1888. It was demolished in 1954. Mm. And County Stadium erected and County Stadium had a big part in the advancement west of Major League Baseball. Ryan Braun takes a ball. Well, the Brooklyn Dodgers were sitting there looking at County Stadium and seeing that Milwaukee was drawing two million fans per year. And the O'Malley said, well, if they can draw two million fans in Milwaukee, just think what we could draw in Los Angeles. <laughs> and that's why they moved. And they needed a partner to move. And so the San Francisco Giants were born. The New York Giants went to San Francisco. Milwaukee has a great place in baseball history. For a lot of reasons. Braun shoots one to right center, a base hit. Aoki around second, he'll head to third. Braun thinking about two. Wisely holds up, and the Brewers put two more runners on base. Getting their hits tonight against Shelby Miller. Yeah, that's why the Cardinals play deep. Like John Jay playing very deep. If that ball gets to the wall, pretty good chance Aoki's going to be able to score, but Jay able to cut it off because of how deep he's playing. Aoki has to hold tight at third base. Fastball up and in, and Ryan Braun pulls the hands in and just shoots it into the gap out there in the right center. Well, and for a club that has gotten very little production from their cleanup spot all year because of the injury to Am Aramis Ramirez, he steps in with two on and two out. And his first game back from the disabled list. Ramirez played in just four games. Start of the year, five for 13 at the plate. He singled his last time up. And he takes a strike on the outside corner. Molina and Miller, the veteran catcher, guiding the 22 year old right hander. First and third, two gone. Ramirez lays off. Aramis with a big year last year. His first year as a Milwaukee Brewer, drove in over 100 runs, got off to a terrible start, and still. Was able to drive in a hundred. One and two now on Ramirez. Just to give you an idea of how badly the Brewers missed Ramirez, the cleanup spot in the Brewers' batting order leading up to tonight's play, a 183 batting average. No home runs and nine RBIs. Yeah. Ramirez had two of those RBIs. And still the Brewers won nine straight. That's because the bottom of the order was so good. Well, all you have to do is look at Ryan Braun's statistics. 
A guy who is leading the league at intentional walks to give you an idea of that cleanup spot for the Brewers. The guy who hits behind Braun. And it has been impressive. Milwaukee comes in with a record of 14 and 13. After a 2 and 8 start. Ripped off nine in a row and that was a winning streak that started in St. Louis. On the 14th of April the final game of that series. Big spot here pitch count. Is up for Miller here in the third inning. This is number 49 coming. And a 2 2 is down and out. Full count to Ramirez. And a good take by Ramirez. And you know, he didn't see too many breaking pitches in batting practice. And one of the few curveballs that Shelby Miller's thrown today. In the second inning, Ramirez ripped a fastball right through the hole between third and short. Cardinals got a pair in the third inning. Brewers trying to answer here in the home third. Rory Aoki with his second hit. He's at third base. Braun singled into right center. Full count. What does Miller give Ramirez here? It's a breaking ball, and Ramirez pops it up. Shallow center. Jay and Beltron, and it'll be Beltron for the out. Inning over. And the Brewers strand two more. Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. By Ho Chunk Gaming Wisconsin, your ticket to more. And by Marshfield Clinic, don't just live, shine. Big crowd on a Friday night, the Cardinals on a two run home run by Matt Holiday have the lead as we head to the fourth inning. Kyle Loesch ready to work against David Freeze. Who has three hits in this series, including a double to left center his last time up? Well, Freeze wasn't all that pleased that Matheny benched him back on the last homestand for St. Louis. He was a struggling hitter. Matheny gave him a day off. He said he wanted to continue to play, hit his way through the slump like he has in the past. And a tough decision for a manager to make, but Matheny. Put Freeze back in the starting lineup to start this series. And a guy who has always hit against Milwaukee has done just that in this set. Look, guy wants a day off, right? I mean, you got a bunch of guys in the bench who would love to be able to say, I don't want to sit this one out. And ever since he did get that day off, he's been swinging the bat much better. Yeah, two for two tonight and a leadoff base runner. Boy, the Cardinals are racking up a ton of hits. Here's a look at tonight's Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the game and the freaky fast 
relay from the Brewers to cut down Alan Craig. And that is how the third inning ended. A good patience by Gene Segura to allow that baseball to get to him. A lot of guys are going to go after that ball and really not put themselves in a very good position to throw, but showing good patience, allowing the ball to get to him and making a very good throw to home plate. Well, that's uh, the key play so far for the Brewers. Cardinals had two in, could have been more if they don't make that play. I mean, you're talking about a run in, a runner at second, Freeze coming up in that spot. Instead, Freeze leads off. John Jay was a strikeout victim in the second inning. He struck out with runners at second and third. And just one out. That helped Loesch get out of that inning. Pulls it and it bounces over the dive of Betancourt into right field. Well, that is a bad break for Kyle Loesch, and it's been kind of that way in this series. The Cardinals have had some things go their way. That ball looked like it was headed right for Betancourt's glove. Yeah, possible double play, but a little bit of top spin came straight up on. Betancourt and down the line. And David Freeze able to get the third base. The ball stays down. You might be able to turn two. You know, Betancourt just put the balls in his glove, tag the bag, and throw to second. Possible. Well, now runners at the corners and nobody out. And Pete Cosma at the plate. Well, there is a way out of this inning for Lowe's. He's down at the bottom of the order, but this becomes the key hitter in the frame now. You got the pitcher due up next. Well, every major league lineup, the most important pieces to that order, typically at the top, obviously the third hitter, the fourth hitter. But in a National League lineup, the eighth place hitter has a major role, and especially when you step to the plate in a spot like this. A little cue shot. Betancourt makes the play. Coming to the plate. The tag is needed. And they cut down the lead run. Betancourt wasn't quite sure what to do there. And he made a perfect throw to Lucroy and another out at home plate. Well, your job as a runner at third base is to take off on a ground ball with. First and third, one out or no outs. A little slice job over to Betancourt, and he makes a nice throw over to Luke Croy, and David Fries just gives up. A bit of a break right there. That could have been a disaster. That ball spinning the way it was. Betancourt you know, waits for it to get to him and makes a good throw to home plate. Yeah, nice play by Uni. An unusual position for him at first base. Never played there before this season. Well, now the pitcher is up, likely up there to bunt with runners at first and second and one out. He's not bunting. He swings away and he cuts right through it. Well, he's pretty close to first base was Betancourt. You wonder if he had time to go to first base, but he was thinking more along the lines of getting it out at home. I think first base was a couple of steps away. If he went over there, might not have been able to get the out. You don't know. We're down already two to nothing. You got to cut off that run. Two outs at the plate for the Brewers tonight. This will be an interesting call here for Matheny. Miller's been a good bunter this year. He has five sack bunts. That leads the major leagues. And he squares and bunts it foul. Dale Scott says foul. Actually hit his bat twice. Double bunt, you're not allowed to do that. Ball goes straight down, hits the bat again, and actually hit his hand. No. He's in the batter's box, so he's okay. It's a foul ball. Right, somewhere over there, Martin Maldonado says, See? See, you gotta have both feet out of the box, not, not this one. <laughs> that was San Diego. Miller squares again. 0 and 2 the count. 
And he bunts it foul, and that'll be a strikeout for Los. So now two men are out. That'll go as the third strikeout for Kyle Los, and the runners back to first and second. All right, Rock, our text question tonight, courtesy of Ho Chunk Gaming. It's a Barron and Kenosha. Are the Brewers wearing new throwback hats tonight? Yeah, they are. Those were the road hats when the Brewers were back in the 80s. But uh, those are the BP hats when the team is at home wearing the throwbacks. Now, Major League Baseball allows each team to wear their batting practice caps one time a year. And tonight's the night from Milwaukee. Sales will go through the roof after they're on display tonight. Got a couple of those hanging in the den at home. A little bit sweaty, a little bit, a little bit of salt on them. Yeah, got the salt ring on them. Yeah, not quite as uh, bright, and it doesn't look nearly as good as that one. Vivacious. It's got a got a lot of rock on those hats. Yes, sir. <laughs> Did you wear your hat when you caught? In the beginning, until Cliff Johnson nailed me in the back of the head. <laughs> and now you know why they call him Rock. Yeah. Broke his bat. Broke his bat. I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Cliff? Oh yeah. Let go of that top hand and look out. Cliff Johnson is a former partner of mine in the broadcast booth. Is that right? How about that? Big Cliff, huh? We did a minor league broadcast together. How was he? <laughs> he was Cliff Johnson. He didn't know anybody's name. He just called guys by their position. Yeah. Like uh, for example, it'd be uh, the pitcher and the left-handed hitter. <laughs> The 2 1. And the pitcher missed. And the hitter now is in a 3 1 count. Cliff was a very intimidating figure out there on the uh, baseball field. I think he smoked a pack of cigarettes during the broadcast. Really? Just one? Yeah. It's a little tough on the old, uh, on the pipes, you know? Yours and his. <laughs> Carpenter fouls it away, 3 and 2. Well, Johnson was. Big power hitter. Yankees and Cleveland. Yeah, the Indians. Toronto. I think Toronto. But uh, he could hit. There's no doubt about that. DH. A Larry Heisel contemporary. You know, those are like when they talk about comps in the big leagues, those two. All right. Those two guys. See if Los can wiggle off this hook. Two on, two out. Runners will get a head start. And the pitch is in the air to left field. Braun on the run. It's slicing foul in the seats. Getting started with back to back hits. Los was sitting there with runners at the corners and nobody out. Cosma, that ground ball to Bencourt, got the out at the plate. A failed bunt attempt by Miller, and now Lowe's a chance to get through this fourth inning. Another payoff coming. Runners go, and a ball down and in, and Lowe's is really hot right now at Dale Scott. Sometimes you just can't figure out what a strike is or what it isn't. And you can see it had the edge, and Dale Scott did not ring him up. Now, Lucroy had to reach back across, but Shouldn't matter. You know, a strike is a strike, and Loesch is not getting the benefit of those pitches so far tonight. Well, now the bases are loaded, and here comes Beltron. Bouncing ball, sounded like a broken bat. Betancourt to Loesch, and that's that. So it takes him one extra pitch. Good job, Kyle Loesch. 2 nothing Cardinals.
Saturday, June 22nd, Brewers Wives are hosting a special event to benefit Sharp Literacy. Lucky winners will go on the field immediately after the game and have a jersey autographed and hand it to them right off the back of the player on the 25-man roster. They'll be selling tickets to the fourth inning for just $1. Proceeds will go to the Brewers Community Foundation in support of Sharp Literacy, which is an organization that has committed itself to addressing literacy issues in Milwaukee's public schools. Great program. Good job by the Brewers' wives. Ricky Weeks leads off for the Brew Crew as we move to the bottom of the fourth inning. Weeks, Lucroy, Gomez. First three up for the Brewers here. Shelby Miller has been able to pitch out of a couple of jams. Twice, stranding two runners on base. The Brewers left 13 last night. And already four tonight. They've had a runner on in every inning so far. Five hits for Milwaukee at this point. One and two to Weeks. Miller gave up just one hit against the Brewers in his, his last start against them. Back in St. Louis, he went seven innings, one hit, he struck out eight. And only one walk. And there's a called strike three on the outside corner. So Miller gets that corner. And Weeks is gone. And Miller's getting the corner that Kyle Lose is not getting. And you wonder how much of an influence Yadier Molina is having back there behind home plate. Don't discount that. That yeah. happens. That's a great point. Just those subtle little movements that Molina has, the way he catches the ball. It's no knock on Lucroy. It's, it's, it's about a guy who is yeah. and at it's the not, top of his game right now. It's not just the physical things that he's doing. It's just his presence back there and the respect that umpires have for Molina. And every now and again, you're going to get called just because he's back there. Controls the game. We talked about it on Brewers Live pregame today. Talk about a field general on the field. Yadier know, Molina. I was talking to a few guys before the game today about Molina and some of the subtle things he does, like shifting his body on a borderline pitch. If it's on the outside corner, he will just slightly up on his toes, just move his body a few inches. And so it looks like he's catching the ball in the middle of his chest protector. When a lot of guys would be reaching across, you know, catching it off their right shoulder. Right. Umpires are, are calling a strike zone, but they are absolutely influenced by the positioning of the catcher behind the plate. And he can manage umpires too. He knows how to speak to him. He knows how to get an umpire to see his way of thinking. And might not be every pitch, but. You know who appreciates a guy like Molina most? Other catchers. He makes it look very easy. He does. It's uh, effortless for him, but it's taken an awful lot of hard work over the course of many years to be able to do what he does behind home plate. Two balls, two strikes on Lucroy. You saw there Molina using the multiple signs despite nobody being at second base the Cardinals started doing that a, a few years ago back in 2011 and uh, you might remember there was uh, when Tony La Russa was managing there was a lot of discussion about the Brewers stealing signs perhaps and so they started going with the multiple signs with nobody on as Molina moves his second baseman over the 2 2, and that one misses outside. Ball three to Lucroy. Well, Yadier Molina and Mike Matheny, the Cardinal manager, they have won eight of the last ten gold gloves behind the plate in the National League. Osmus uh, and Russell Martin, the other two. Plenty of hardware represented with those two. Lucroy hits that one hard to right. Beltron. Easing back with room. And he's got it for the out. Two outs. Good at bat by Lucroy. 
Well, today's All Star voting is brought to you by Felco. These are the Brewers that are on the ballot. And uh, All Star voting is underway now. You can go to Brewers.com. Get punch the ticket here at the ballpark. The man not on that list is Uni Betancourt, who actually received some votes for the player of the month in the National League in the first month of the season. So there's a way you can uh, write him in as well or type him in online. A couple of guys making a strong bid for an all star appearance. Carlos Gomez the league's leading hitter. And Gene Segura. The young shortstop. And when you uh, consider where Gomez was in the first. What week and a half 10 day 10 games. Hitting under 200 he has been red hot. Since that last game that Sunday game in St. Louis. Little tapper this is going to be a tough play coming in Cosma throw to first in time nicely done. By the Cardinal shortstop. Three up three down inning for Shelby Miller. Two nothing Cardinals we go to the fifth. First rewind and we take you back Matt Holiday with a two run home run in the third inning that came with two outs in the inning. Brewers executed a perfect relay on Yadier Molina cutting down a potential third run for the Cardinals. That's how the third inning ended. Bencourt made a nice play and another out at home plate. That was in the fourth. Twice Cardinals have been retired at home plate. Loesch has given up eight hits already but only the two runs and both of those runs on one swing of the bat by Matt Holiday who hit the ball about as hard as is humanly possible and he shoots one through the hole for a base hit two hits for Matt Holiday Boy, a lot of traffic on base tonight against Kyle Lowe's that's hit number nine for the Cardinals now eight for 15 career is Matt Holiday against Kyle Lowe's. Something about Kyle Lowe's holiday sees the baseball well and gets his hits. And although they were teammates, of course, Holiday was with the Rockies for many years. Los started his career with the Twins and then spent some time in Cincinnati and Philadelphia. Alan Craig, who has two hits tonight. Two hard hit balls by Craig. Both have been pulled. The guy who stands right on top of the plate. Not a whole lot of room on that inside corner. I'm mean, just daring you to throw one inside, but with Craig, Craig, he hits the ball so well to the opposite field. He's got very good opposite field power. Center field around to the right field line. And I think pitchers uh, somewhat. 
hesitant to come inside on him. He's got that open stance, but watch the front foot as the ball gets to home plate. He's going to close up and square himself up. And two strikes on Craig. Craig getting the chance now to to play every day at first base. He's got uh, one position that he can play. He's played a little bit of uh, right field this season. Got a couple of games in left. But for the most part, he's the everyday first baseman for Mike Matheny. 22 of his starts this season have come at first base. Greg had a good postseason last year, especially in the division series against Washington. Had a home run in that LDS. Cardinals, the first ever National League wild card play in champion. So remember the last year, the first year, there were two wild card teams. St. Louis went to Atlanta. And beat the Braves and then went to Washington to start that series. They ended up winning that series against the Nationals in five games, losing in seven games to the Giants in the NLCS. Giants would go on to win the World Series. And yeah, Washington thought they had that series wrapped up in the final game. And how many times have the Cardinals done that? Craig lines one to Braun. Boy, he hit it like a bullet, but right at Ryan Braun. And the first out of the inning is a loud one. Yeah, slider down and you know, watch Kyle Lowe's. Sees the out looking at Luke Croy. And I'm not sure if that was the Luke Croy or the home plate umpire. Pitch was down but it had a lot of the plate and Alan Craig crushed it. So one gone for Molina. Swings of the first pitch, fly ball to right. Aoki can't get there. And Molina is aboard with his second hit. The Brewers pitchers aren't fooling the Cardinals much in this series. Ten hits now already for the Cardinals in the fifth. Kyle Loesch's career high in hits allowed in a start he is 12 and that goes back to the 03 season. Cardinals have 10 hits we're only in the fifth inning but only two runs are in. Took a little off for freeze and a change up. I haven't seen a lot of change ups out of Kyle Loesch tonight in fastballs breaking pitches. Started to freeze out with a changeup. See the career of Kyle Loesch. Totally changed his game when he went to St. Louis. He gives Dave Duncan a lot of credit for turning him into the pitcher he is. That ball's into left field. Pretty well hit. Braun right there. He got turned around a bit, but he was playing deep. And Freeze, who's hit everything on the nose tonight, lines out. And two line drive outs in this inning to go along with two hits for the Cardinals. And breaking ball up in the strike zone and Ryan Braun going over, backing up, has it all the way, knows the runners aren't going to tag up. So two gone now. And it'll be John Jay. Who played with Ryan Braun at Miami? They were teammates with the Hurricanes. I remember when Jay first came to the big leagues. At the time, Colby Rasmus was the everyday center fielder for the Cardinals. Didn't look like he was going to give up that job for a while. 
big prospect. He was hitting well. And uh, Braun said, look out for this guy. He's a hitter. He, he doesn't do anything that jumps off the page at you from a skills perspective. You know, he's not all that fast. He doesn't have that great of an arm. Doesn't hit for a lot of power, but he just does everything well. He covers a lot of ground in center field. He's always on those highlight reels. Making nice plays out in center, diving catches. Seems like uh, whenever you play the Cardinals, he's either real hot or real cold. Not a whole lot of in between with John Jay. <clears throat> Jay broke in in 2010. Became the everyday center fielder in 11. And it was really the success of John Jay that allowed the Cardinals to make what was their their key move in 11 as they went on to win the World Series. Remember the trade they had with the Blue Jays. They picked up three pitchers for Colby Rasmus. That was because John Jay took over the center field role and Rasmus was expendable. 2 2 is hit hard left field. Braun on the run. Braun cannot get it. One run is in. That's Holiday. They're going to send Molina. Segura's throw to the plate is late. Snap throw to second and out at second base. But the run scores. And it is a two RBI double for John Jay. And the Cardinals have a 4 0 lead. And that one hurts. So the inning ends. At second base. And a good peg by Lucroy. But now it's 4 0. Cardinals drives in a pair with two outs and another two out two RBI hit for St. Louis now four to nothing rock and Brewers playing their outfield shallow Ryan runs shallow and left Jay hits it over his head and once again the good relay the good throw by Luke Croy allows Luke Croy to make the throw Segura with a good peg to home plate and that'll go as a two to four put out a very close play at second base but the Brewers get the call. Well, it has to be maddening for Rick Kranitz, the pitching coach, Ron Renicki, the manager. The fact that the Cardinals have scored 10 runs in this series and all of them have come with two outs. Six yesterday in the same inning. And then both of the run producing hits tonight, Holiday and Jay, have come with two outs. Yeah, two outs, uh, you know, very common to get a lot of run production. That's when you know, a lot of activity on the bases, you run, runners move up and had to come up with that big hit, and the Cardinals have been doing that pretty much all year. At least the first month plus. Very good in those spots. 
Check the Powerball home run leaderboard with Betancourt at the plate. He has seven this year. He and Braun are among the leaders in the National League. Tied for sixth in the league as Uni pops it up. Shallow center. And Jay is there for out number one. So that's going to do it for Loesch tonight. As Renicky goes to his bench. And Kyle Loesch with his worst start as a brewer. He gives up four earned runs in five innings. And still has not been able to get much run support. Brewers uh, with nothing on the board tonight. His two losses were both shutouts against Milwaukee. So here is Blake Lolly pinch hitting for Los. Los with five innings, 11 hits tonight. Four runs all earned, had a walk and three strikeouts. And just did not have that put away pitch. And remember, Cardinals have committed or have made three outs on the base pads two at the plate one at second damage could have been a whole lot worse Lolly getting a chance off the bench I'm sure he was uh, doing some numbers crunching the last few days those have made two transactions Josh Prince was sent down today to make room for Ramos Ramirez Two days ago, it was Chris Davis who went down as Jeff Bianchi returned. I think the fact that he's a left handed hitter and he's a catcher has helped him. Out to center field, Jerry runs it down. Smooth as silk for the second out. Molly put a good swing on it, but nothing to show for it. Shelby Miller is dialed it down now. He has retired six in a row. Brewers had a couple of chances early to score against him. Had two on in the second. Had two on in the third. Came up empty on both occasions. Aoki with two hits tonight. Single to right and a single to center. Hit one off the fence in right field his first time up. Working very quickly, not a lot of time between pitches for Miller. That's showing that he's got confidence out there, throwing the baseball very well. Well, Yadier Molina is giving Dale Scott the business. Thought that last pitch was a strike. Well, to your point about how a catcher can influence a home plate umpire. Looked like a, a respectful conversation, but Molina still engaging the umpire in conversation. Yeah, as long as you keep your eyes forward, you know Molina turned around just a little bit, but as long as the umpire, you, you can say a lot to an umpire as long as the fans don't know you're talking to them. Eyes forward, you could say just about anything. Okay, a bouncer out to short, Cosma in time, and now Shelby Miller. With seven straight retired, five in the books, we head to the sixth.
Our minor league report, Huntsville's Jimmy Nelson took the loss of the Stars 3-1 setback at Mobile last night. But so far this season, he's 3-1, an ERA of 1.91, 33 innings pitch, 37 strikeouts, just six walks, and he was the minor league pitcher of the month, a well-deserved honor from the organization, guys. Yeah, his name pops up quite a bit. He and uh, Johnny Helwig. The two guys that the Brewers are keeping a close eye on, and you certainly might see them at some point this season. All right, Rock, new pitcher for the Brewers. Loach is out after five innings, and it's going to be Brandon Kensler to try to keep this Cardinals batting order down for a little bit. Yeah, got to put up some zeros, and now this Brewers offense to get going. Twelfth appearance for Kinsler. He's got a 2 0 record, a 523 earned run average for Brandon. Has pitched on Tuesday, and you see that earned run average really because of that appearance against the Pirates two runs in two thirds of an inning. Kensler facing Pete Cosma to start it, the Cardinal shortstop. And then the pitcher Miller will hit. Eight, nine, and one due up for St. Louis. Four runs on 11 hits for the Cardinals. The two big hits, Holiday's home run in the third. And John Jay a two run double in the fifth. Meanwhile Shelby Miller has not allowed a hit since the third inning. On the other side bouncing ball Segura ranging over. And off balance throw in time. Excellent play by Gene Segura. Well he covers a ton of ground he had Cosma. Shaded in the hole there, yeah, which is unusual because you got a guy throwing the baseball pretty hard in Kinsler and makes that play look easy. The off balance throw, a lot on it, right on the money for Segura. And just getting Cosma by half a step. I heard a great line on uh, Gene Segura was talking to a couple of scouts, and you know how we talk about Segura and, and his body control, the fact that he can. Get himself back in balance to make a throw, and the scout said, "Yeah, you drop him off a roof. He's going to land on his feet. <laughs> That's the way he is. He's, yeah. he's got that low center of gravity, and he never seems like he's stumbling or out of control. He's just always right there. Yeah, he's got great balance. We talk about that a lot with Segura. Great balance and has field presence. You know, when he's up the middle or in the hole, it spins around. He always seems to know." Exactly where second base is or first base getting rid of the baseball very quickly. Those are things you really can't teach. Well, great to have you with us tonight. Brian Anderson with Bill Schroeder, Mark Concannon. Brewers and the Cardinals from Miller Park, Milwaukee. Our producer Wave Robinson and Kevin Shank, our director tonight. Sophia Minner. Handling the social media tonight. It's a cast of thousands. Don't forget Brewers Live coming up after the game with Craig Cashon and Jerry Augustine. Defensive swing there by Miller and a strikeout. He has struck out all three times tonight. Two gone for Kinsler. And now back to the top of the order. Brewers and the Cardinals will continue tomorrow. It's a four game series and don't forget tomorrow's game is on Fox on the network. Justin Kutcher and Eric Karos will have the call for you. And a great pitching matchup tomorrow. It'll be one of the best in the big leagues. Gallardo against Wainwright. Rematch. Rematch of a game in St. Louis. Brewers are hoping for a different outcome. Wainwright went the distance against the Brewers that day. Gallardo has always struggled against the Cardinals. That is one of his nemesis teams. Wainwright is out to a fantastic start. Four wins in the month of April and an ERA at 2-0-3. The Cardinals starting pitching. Is as good as it gets in the big leagues right now. They've got an ERA right around two as a starting group. Jake Westbrook leads the league in ERA. Wainwright is eighth. Broken bat. Segura coming in, fields it, throws it in time. 
One, two, three inning for Kinsler. Brewers being shut out on a five hitter. We head to the bottom of the six. See if the bats can get going after Carpenter breaks his. Sausages here at Miller Park, mid sixth. And don't forget, and we're on the world class experience this summer as Quick Trip presents the inaugural Brewers Baseball Academy. These instructional kit camps are coming to a city near you. Visit Brewers.com slash camps today. Not much of an effort by the uh, sausages. It's a little sluggish. I was going to say the same thing. I'm not, not sure what the uh, Polish was thinking tonight. You got to bring it every night in the big leagues, right? That's weak. Every night. I think those are stand ins. Yeah, I don't know. It's not part of the regular it group. Must be under know. the weather or something. The weather getting to them. If you can't go all out, don't bother. You can't dog it out there. Nice. I was fed that one. That, that doesn't sound like something I'd say. I apologize. Here's Gene Segura leading off for the Brewers in the bottom of the sixth inning. Now this big crowd here is ready to roar at something. The Brewers have had a few moments. They've had some hits. But Shelby Miller has shut them down tonight. Brewers started this homestand by winning the first two games against the Pirates. Lost the final game of the series with Pittsburgh and then lost last night. In both cases they put up a, a fight late had a chance to come back and win. Kind of like the way the team is playing right now still playing shorthanded without Corey Hart at first. But they got a big piece back tonight in Aramis Ramirez. And this is the part of the order that you'd like to see the Brewers Make some noise here with Segura, then Braun, and then Ramirez coming up. Four nothing St. Louis. Two in the third, two in the fifth. Miller has been very efficient tonight. Just 81 pitches as we play here in the sixth inning. Seven in a row retired since the Ryan Braun single in the third. Segura has struck out twice tonight. Swinging in the first, looking in the third. And the 2 2 is fouled away. Mm -hmm. 
St. Louis does not have a starting pitcher with an ERA over two and a half. Or 2.75, I should say. How about this? Lance Lynn has the highest ERA on the team. He's 5 and 0 with a 2.75 ERA. <laughs> He's having the worst season. Yeah. Well, that's why it's so important, but it's awfully very difficult to do. I mean, you got to get into that bullpen. Those are the guys that have been struggling. They've got an ERA near six. But getting into that bullpen has been tough for everybody, not just Milwaukee. The 2 2 and Segura just got a piece. This is going to be a 10 pitch at bat for Segura. Another 2 2 on the way. And Segura. Fouls another one off. Oh, what a battle here. No secrets with Miller. He's just raring back, throwing the fastball, just spotting the fastball. And throwing too many breaking pitches to change up or two, but you're right. I mean, it's been predominantly fastballs up and down between 92 and 96. Brewers have just not been able to figure this guy out in two starts. So pitch number 11 coming. And Molina in the think tank. Segura lines it right to Carpenter. Oh, terrific at bat and he hit it hard but right at Matt Carpenter for the first out. It's been one of those series for Milwaukee. I was talking to Rod Renicki about that earlier today. There's nothing you can do about it and you go through a season it happens. But the Brewers are getting some pretty good swings. On the Cardinal pitchers there are a ton of line drives that have gone for outs. Braun hit a couple of them yesterday. A yeah, bunch of Adam balls. I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, every team goes through it. Every hitter goes through it, and that's just the way it goes. So the flip side of that, you're gonna, you know, hit some baseballs that don't deserve to be base hits, but they end up falling. The Cardinals have a couple of lineouts tonight as well. Braun bounced into a double play in the first inning. He singled sharply to right center his last time up in the third. And that was the last hit for the Brewers. Eight in a row retired by Miller. Pitch number 90 coming here. And that one caught the corner. Two and one. Miller came up last year and pitched out of the bullpen. He did make one start the last game of the season. And then he pitched out of the bullpen in the playoffs for the Cardinals. And he was very good early in the postseason. He ended up giving up a couple of runs late he pitched in two games in the LCS he was added to that LCS roster after the Cardinals advanced through the wild card game and then the NLDS against Washington not much of a difference is there I mean all the way through the batting order Shelby Miller has been pretty good this Cardinal uh, pitching staff, they've got some uh, depth and they've got some big arms. We saw Rosenthal last night get up to 99. And Miller's been in 97. Joe Kelly. His kid, uh, Carlos Martinez, they say, can bring it. He replaced Mitchell Boggs on the roster. Cardinals made that move after the game last night. 2 2 to Braun. And he shoots one to right, a base hit. Oh, a beautiful piece of hitting there by Braun, his second hit against Miller. 
He's two for three. And a man on for Aramis Ramirez. Who is in our shining moment tonight. Back from the DL. Tonight's shining moment brought to you by the Marshfield Clinic. Yep, first at bat. Fastball down and in. He's able to golf it out into left field. He showed some pretty good range. Not 100%, but able to get his feet under him and make a throw to first base. So good to have Aramis Ramirez back in that Brewers lineup. So Ramirez is now six for 15 on the season. And a bouncing ball through the hole. It's a two hit night for Ramirez. And he finds a hole on the left side twice. So now the Brewers in a position once again with two on, one out. And week's coming up. See if they can cash in this time. Yeah, that's why organizations rely on the opinion of these veteran guys, whether they need to go down on a rehab assignment or not. Ramirez is two for three. I'd say he really hasn't lost much. And Ramirez is going to be taken out of the game here. And Renicky said he'd probably let him play five to seven innings somewhere in that range, get him three at bats, and he does so. And it's going to be Alex Gonzalez to pinch run for him. And he'll stay in the game to play third base. Or maybe he'll go to first and Betancourt to third. Well, that's a good return right there. Ramos Ramirez, two hits. And a big bat back in the lineup. Derek Lilliquist, quick meeting at the mound with Molina and Miller. Ricky Weeks. So Miller with one out. He's thrown 18 pitches in this inning. 11 to Segura. Who hit the ball sharply for the first out. Still has good velocity on his fastball as he gets near that 100 pitch mark. That one in 94. I can't remember a young pitcher like this who uses the high fastball as well as Miller does. Just has impeccable command up there, right at the top of the strike zone. And then he backs it up with a breaking ball, and now it's 0-2 and, and a good block back there from Molina. You get an aggressive hitter you know, trying to put a three pointer on the board and you get him with a slider in the dirt. Here's the 0 2 and another breaking ball. Miller's not a guy that throws a lot of breaking balls, but that's the scouting report for Ricky Weeks. One and two now on Weeks. Brewers need a big hit. Four nothing Cardinals in the sixth. And that one just missed. Two and two the count. It's one of the newer Cardinals up from the minor league. Seth Manus in the Redbird bullpen. The 2 2 pitch. Full count. Lena wants Dale Scott to ask for an appeal. Dale Scott says, I'll do the umpiring, Mr. Gold Glove. Really not even close. Maybe he thought maybe he tipped it. Maybe so, yeah, that's a good point. Now here comes a big pitch. Ball count two on, one away. And Weeks takes ball four. Bases loaded. Oh, good at bat by Ricky. He was down in the count 0 and 2. 
Shelby Miller tried to get him to chase and Ricky drawing a big walk now. The tying run coming to home plate. So Matheny with activity in the bullpen will stick with Miller. We take you back. April 14th, a 10th inning home run for Jonathan Lucroy. That proved to be a game winner for Lucroy. And that big, big win on a Sunday in St. Louis. And that started a nine game winning streak. Lucroy in his career has been the best the Brewers have to offer with the bases loaded. A 333 hitter in spots like this. But he's been a struggling hitter recently. Four nothing Cardinals with one away. And Luke Roy in the center field. Back is Jay. All three runners will tag. And in to score is Ryan Braun. The Brewers finally on the board. They score for the first time all year against Miller. On a sack fly and an RBI from Luke Roy. And it's four to one St. Louis. They hit it pretty well, but as deep as that outfield is, no way they're going to be able to make a play on the bases. Well, get one on the board and hopefully get into that Brewers, that Cardinals bullpen. Plenty of time left. Well, and Miller will now face the league's leading hitter in Carlos Gomez, who has a hit tonight. He's one for two. A fastball pitcher and a fastball hitter. Tying run at the plate here in the sixth. And Miller in there with a strike with a fastball. A strike. And still rushing it up there pretty good is Shelby Miller. You see what the bullpen has done. Last in the National League at 5.78. And Matheny is just riding it out with the 22 year old. Manus is ready in the bullpen. Gonzalez at third, Weeks at first, and Gomez a mighty hack. Right at the top of the zone again, and it's a ball and two strikes. Brewers had the bases loaded, one out. Luke Croy with the sack fly, finally scoring against St. Louis tonight. Gonzalez pinch ran for Ramirez, weeks with the walk. And now Gomez in a hole, one and two. And down he goes. Miller strikes him out and gets through it. Six strong for Shelby Miller, probably his last batter feast.
Wisconsin Lottery reminding you to please play responsibly. And by Miller Lite. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Dean Roscoe playing the organ here at Miller Park. Looking for some rally music tonight. The Brewers are down 4-1. to one. As we head to the seventh inning, some changes here for the Brewers defensively. Alex Gonzalez came in to pinch run for Ramirez. He goes to first base. And that moves Uni Bedcourt over to third. Kensler back out there for his second inning. A three up, three down, sixth inning for Kensler. Probably seen the last of Shelby Miller up over 100 pitches through six. And the Brewers are anxious to get into that Cardinal bullpen. Miller's been tough on the Brewers this year. He has only allowed one run in 13 innings this season and two starts. Beltron, Holiday, and Craig. Tough part of the order for the Cardinals. That ball's hit hard to right. Back is Aoki at the track, looks up, and it is off the top of the wall and out. Carlos Beltran adds to the lead, and as much of a grind as it was for the Brewers to get a run, the Cardinals snatch it right back. And it's 5-1 to one on Beltran's eighth home run of the season. And it seems so easy at times for this Cardinal ball club. Now 12 hits on the night. Fastball from Brandon Kinsler and that one leaked back over the heart of the plate supposed to be inside and make a mistake like that to Beltron you're going to pay off the top of the wall and into the Cardinals bullpen. Just enough. Holiday. It was two run home run in the third inning put the Cardinals on the board. Now that home run. By Beltron bumps him up in the National League he's currently. Tied for fourth now Justin Upton leads the league. With 12 home runs he was the player of the month. In the month of April for the Atlanta Braves. Well, from a dynamic backcourt that helped the Bucks to the playoffs to Larry Sanders emergence as a premier post player Fox Sports Wisconsin takes a look back at the Milwaukee Bucks season it's Bucks season review Tuesday 10 30 p.m. on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Full count to holiday. Count remains at three and two. Holiday with his fourth home run of the season and third. Two hits tonight. He scored twice. Another payoff pitch, and that one's inside for a ball. And Holiday draws the walk. So on base for the third time a home run and a walk and Kinsler. Out to a shaky start in the seventh inning now after a three up three down sixth. And the second inning for Kinsler. Not off to a good start. Pitching you know when your. Team is struggling to score runs they have been against this Cardinals club. At least early on. Seems like they can't make any mistakes. Alan Craig has hit the ball hard all three times tonight. Two hits, a line drive out. And his three at bats. Kinsler could use a ground ball here. Brewers are catching this Cardinal team hot. Coming off a winning series against Cincinnati. After they lost a series to the Pirates at home. Bounce right back took two out of three from the Reds. Now 
Yeah, when you get starting pitching like the Cardinals have so far, you can always be in games. I mean, Shelby Miller lost his last start to Pittsburgh, giving up only three runs, and he got into the sixth inning. So when this Cardinal club is hitting, they're going to be tough. A little half swing, and he goes to even the count at two and two. Going back to the 2010 season, the Cardinals have had more success here than any other division opponent. They've won 13 of 25 here at Miller Park. Brewers have winning records against every other team in the division and against a lot of those teams, it's been dominating. Holiday goes and a liner to left, a base hit. Braun is able to cut it off and that'll save a run. But Alan Craig has a three hit game. And not much going right here in the seventh inning for Kinsler. And a 2 2 pitch. He left one in the inner half, and we showed you how close to the plate Alan Craig stands. That was supposed to be away. It leaked back over the heart of the plate, and he hit it hard to left field. And the way these guys have been swinging a bat, you can't miss your spots too badly. Well, they're going to hit it pretty hard. Rick Kranitz out to the mound. Now, don't forget the Brewers and the Cardinals on Fox tomorrow. Fox Saturday Baseball right here at Miller Park. Justin Kutcher and Eric Karros. Start time tomorrow is 2.30 for the pregame show. Ball game will start just after 3. Brewers and the Cardinals on Fox Saturday Baseball tomorrow. We'll be back with you on Fox Sports Wisconsin on cable on Sunday. And then a day off Monday, followed by a two game series with the Rangers, Tuesday and Wednesday. First and third, nobody out for Molina. Two more hits tonight for Molina. Got a double in the third. He singled and scored in the fifth. Mike Gonzalez getting loose. Yeah, every position player for the Cardinals with a base hit except for Cosma. It's been a uh, very well spread out offensive attack tonight for St. Louis, although they've only got five runs on the board. But right now, looking for more, still nobody out. Take a look at this last delivery by Kinsler. Like he kind of clutched a little bit after the throw. Not sure if he just he got just a spike hung up or just lost his balance, perhaps. Looks like he's all right. Brewers need an out. 2 0 on Molina. He's in a hitter's count. And he popped him up. Back is Weeks making the call. And there is the first out. Well, now a double play, and the Brewers can escape this inning with only one run allowed. Trying to get into that Cardinal bullpen and take your chances. Down four now. The Cardinals have 13 hits tonight. At 12 last night. Well, certainly within striking distance. You know, you look at the scoreboard 13 hits, only five runs. It could be a whole lot worse. Well, Brewers uh, have plenty of time, three innings. Crowd of over 40,000. And the Cardinals have kept them quiet tonight. David Freeze with two hits and a line drive out. He's been a tough out. The Brewers will have the bottom of the order in the seventh inning. And you know, Renneke would love to squeeze another frame out of Kinsler. His spot in the order due up second. And that is a swing and a miss off the glove of Luke Croy. And another run comes in. Oh, those are mistakes you just can't make in a game like this. It's now 6 to 1, St. Louis. I get a guy as a pass ball. The third pass ball charged against Milwaukee this year. And two seam fastball. Luke Roy just flat missed it. That'll be a pass ball and they run in. 
Not sure what happened there. Relatively easy catch. 6 1 St. Louis. And now Craig at second base. Bouncer to third. Bencord. Long throw in time for the out. Uni started the game at first, moves over to third base, and makes a nice play. And that was your double play ball right there. Mm. Bentoncourt back. He takes the hop on the backhand and able to make a good, strong throw over to first base. And Gonzalez keeps his foot on the bag. So two men are out. And it's John Jay now. Jay had a big hit back in the fifth inning. A two out, two RBI double. He slapped one over the head of Braun and left. That made it 4 0 at the time. It's been uh, three two run innings for the Cardinals, and they lead 6 to 1. Remember uh, Tim Dillard Rock? I do. Former reliever. Well, he was uh, re signed by the Brewers and assigned to Triple A Nashville. He's back in the organization. Still throwing sidearm? Yeah. Dropped him down sidearm. Good to have uh, Tim back in the organization. It's been a rough road for him, but yeah. he's back. He's going to get another chance. That's all you can ask for. So Jay will be placed at first. And Kensler going to deal with the right hand at hitting Pete Cosma. And a rough inning for Kensler. Two hits, a walk. There's been a pass ball. Intentional walk. Cosmo with two on and two away. 0 for 3 tonight. And all of his outs have been on the ground. And Cosma delivers a base hit. They're going to try. They're going to send Craig the throw to the plate. One hop, the tag. And he is out for the second time tonight. Aoki cuts down Craig. And for the third time tonight, the Cardinals have made it out at home plate. Man. Excellent job by Lucroy blocking off home plate and gets the out. Brewers needed that. 6 1 St. Louis, bottom of the seventh coming up.
fun and always a big crowd on hand when the division rival Cardinals are in town. More than 40,000 fans here at Miller Park looking to see the Brewers go for a comeback win here and even the series tonight on our AT&T Twitter poll. The Cardinals ran away with this one as the team that fans most want to see the Brewers beat 73% of the vote. Our fellow division rivals, the Cubs, took 21% and some fans in the other category, Brian, already looking ahead to the postseason saying whoever the Brewers beat in the playoffs and hey, even the World Series. So hey. Brewers fans still very optimistic yeah. even though uh, we're trailing 6-1 to here. That's the way you gotta be. It's only May. Another look at this play, Rock. Aoki cutting down Craig. Right, Luke Roy blocking off home plate. Had he not done that, Craig would have been safe. That's the way he kicks that foot out. He gave him home plate. He took it away and was able to get the out. A solid you know foundation with that left foot was why you know Craig was not able to push it over home plate. Now here is the hard throwing Carlos Martinez. See his numbers in double A Springfield. This is one of the prize prospects in the Cardinals organization. Facing Uni Betancourt to start it. Yeah, he was a starter down in the minor leagues. Watch Luke Croy dig that left foot in there. You can see Craig right in on his ankle, and you know, Craig just stopped dead right in front of home plate. That's a terrific job by Jonathan Luke Croy blocking off home plate. Ben Cord, little flare, one hopper at Cosma, no throw. Well, you talk about a well placed base hit. Didn't have much on it, but UDB is aboard. And the first batter that Martinez faces in his big league career is a base hit. Well, just uh, able to get a base hit. Another infield hit from Milwaukee. Continue to lead all of baseball in infield hits. Michael Gonzalez in the bullpen. Kinsler is out as Ron Renneke announces or sends Logan Schaefer to be announced as the pinch hitter. Schaefer had a hit last night. He is now four for 12 off the bench as a pinch hitter. Cardinals go from the 22 year old Shelby Miller to the 21 year old flamethrower Carlos Martinez. And Johnny and Aaron going through a scouting report on this kid. This young man has been known to hit triple digits with his four seamer. Good numbers down in the minor leagues. Three starts. Six feet, 165 pounds. So he's not a big guy. Not very heavy anyway out of the Dominican Republic. At this time last year he was an A ball. In the Florida State League. Pushed his way to double A. He's been a starter throughout his minor league career. As a matter of fact all. But one of his 55 minor league appearances has been in a starting role. And now he's getting his major league debut here as a reliever. And it's two balls and a strike. He's got a curve ball and a change up to go with it, but it's been predominantly fastballs from Martinez so far. Three balls and a strike on Schaefer. Down at the bottom of the batting order, the Brewers desperate for base runners. They've had some some chances in this game. They left two on in the second and the third. Had the bases loaded with one out in the sixth inning and managed just one. Lucroy had the sack fly. Three and one to Schaefer. Back to the box. Got a chance for two. One to six to three in a double play just like that. Two quick outs one swing of the bat. That 95 mile an hour fastball also works the second base. <laughs> and very quick he knew exactly who was going to be covering and Cosmo though he fell down able to get enough on the throw to get the double play. So the Cardinals continue to rack up the double plays. Once league leaders in that category. Now 
at the plate presented by Wendy's Nori Aoki with two hits two singles off Miller who was very good once again tonight Miller gave up seven hits but only one run he was at his best when the Brewers had men on base six innings seven hits one run five strikeouts for Shelby Miller and he's in line for the victory tonight. Cardinals have another kid in the minor leagues by the name of Michael Waka, who is just as high on the list as far as prospects. St. Louis is in a golden spot right now with young pitching. No organization in baseball has the pitching that the Cardinals have. And that's why they weren't real eager to sign Kyle Rose to a long term deal. They offered him a one year contract. Which he turned down. Man, this young man, 21 years old. So they're young, they have big arms, and on the job training in the big leagues. Slow roller to Cosma, and he makes a play for the out. And that turns out to be a scoreless inning in his major league debut for Carlos Martinez. The St. Louis eighth inning. Matt Holiday with a two run homer to get the scoring started tonight. And the Brewers have two outfield assists on outs at home. There have been three outs at home, one on the bases. Shelby Miller, the starter for the Cardinals, six strong innings with five Ks. In line for the win. Kyle Loesch lasted just five tonight, gave up four earned runs. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Brewers and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of the Brewers. Michael Gonzalez next up for the Brewers out of the bullpen. Kinsler goes two innings in relief of Loesch, and now Gonzalez is up. Now last pitched on Wednesday against the Pirates. A third of an inning, allowed to hit no runs, and allowed an inherited runner to score in the eighth inning of that ball game. Ty Wigginton leads off. He's pinch hitting for Martinez. Wigginton, former All Star, took him a while to to break through. Was an All Star with the Orioles. Played a lot of second base that year for Baltimore. Doesn't look like a second baseman, does he? Big guy. Had some uh, had a pretty good time of it with the Mets. Veteran bat off that bench. Wigginton has been around since 2002. The Cardinals are his eighth different team. His longest stay was with the Mets. Three years. 
There's a strike called and Gonzalez brings up Ty Wigginson for the first out of the inning. And he was with the Phillies last year was Wigginson. Gonzalez has been throwing the ball very well after a shaky start that one catching plenty of the plate outside half. Top of the order now Matt Carpenter. There's strike one. Carpenter with a hit tonight he doubled in the third inning he's walked. Got an on base percentage over 350. Done a nice job in that leadoff spot for St. Louis. He leads the National League in runs scored. That, that's what you want your leadoff hitter to do. 24 runs scored for Carpenter, including the one tonight. That most important statistics for a leadoff hitter on base percentage and runs scored. You're right. There's another guy that has. Uh, Found a home at a singular position, playing second base. But he can play everywhere. We've seen him everywhere in the big leagues corner outfield spots, corner infield spots, second base. But Matheny has settled him at one spot at second base this year. He's done a nice job over there. Little flare right to Segura, easy enough. Two up and two down for Michael Gonzalez. At each regularly priced Brewers home game, fans can purchase half price loads of bleacher tickets in Club Goodwill. These tickets are sold day of game only and at the ticket windows in left field. Here's Beltron now, the switch hitter, turns around and hits right handed for the first time tonight. Hit a home run last time up left handed. Hit home runs from each side of the plate against the Pirates last Friday, or the Reds, I beg your pardon. Lifts this one high in the air, Segura and Braun. It'll be Braun to make the call. And a good inning for Gonzalez. Getting late for the crew. They're down five. Head to the bottom of the eight. Going to need it. They're down six to one. They've left 20 on base so far in this two games against St. Louis, and uh, it all starts with St. Louis's effective starting pitching. Yeah, when you look at this, the series between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Milwaukee Brewers so far this year, it's all about the starting pitching. 33 innings, we have just scored two runs. We've had the opportunities, just can't get the big two out hits, the big base hits with runners in scoring position. All right, just a couple innings left against uh, relief pitching to try to get back into this one. Speaking of starting pitching, the Miller Lite, what's on tap tomorrow? 305 start. Adam Wainwright, Giovanni Gardo, that is on 
Fox National. Check your local listings for the correct station in your area. We'll be back with you on Sunday afternoon. But what a gem that's going to be. Wayne Wright and Yohan. We have full postgame coverage of this one coming up on Brewers Live. Brian. All right, Craig. Thanks. A girl on the first pitch from Seth Manis, the new Cardinal hurler, is it out? One pitch, one out. So a couple of uh, newcomers to this St. Louis Cardinals bullpen as many problems as that bullpen has had. Mike Matheny is trying to find a couple of guys to get some outs. Martinez doing a good job. Now it's Manis's shot. Sinker slider pitcher. Manis making his major league debut as well. He and Martinez the first big league games. Uh, getting some late innings in this bullpen overhaul for St. Louis. Manus took the spot of Mark Zepchinski, who was sent out last week. He's been a starter down in the minor leagues as well, Manus. Triple A Memphis in the PCL. Has great command, as you can see. This guy in his minor league career. Which uh, covers two seasons and six different spots is Braun slow roller and a race to the bag Manis is there and there is out number two. Well, if you want to learn the basics of baseball tune into our Brewers live post game instructional tonight they'll be going through the techniques and strategies of the game. Jerry Augustine and Bill Schroeder what's up uh, on your slate tonight rock any idea. I mean well let me I'm going to have you guess. How about. How about you guys go through a little um, uh, blocking home plate cutoffs and relays is what we're going to be talking about. I see cutoffs and relays as is evidenced by the pictures on the screen. See blocking of home plate you know forces me to be actively involved. I have to kind of <laughs> moderate the whole thing. I see. You know what I want to do is starting out with the instructional. I, Jerry Augustine has a tremendous Cliff Johnson story. You know we we're talking about Big Cliff. I want to get Augie to tell that story. It's a great one. It has oh. to do with Jim Gantner. Oh man, what a cliffhanger! What a teaser! To the ninth we go. Well, the defense has been on display tonight. Otherwise, the Cardinals could be running away with it here. How about four outs on the bases? Three of them rock coming at home plate in this game. Well, and actually, the uh, the Brewers pitching staff has given up four base hits in this game that have resulted in outs. So they have been very fortunate. A six to one deficit could be a lot worse had it not been for some very good defensive plays, particularly from the outfield. Three outfield assist tonight. Luke Croy with an assist on a play at second. That's showing good fundamentals is this Brewer ball club here tonight. Now those three outs we just showed you, those all ended innings tonight. So it's six to one St. Louis as we go to the ninth inning and an opportunity for Renicky 
to get John Axford a little work here as he has to go through the middle of this order. Axford gave up a late lead on Wednesday afternoon against the Pirates and continues to struggle this year overall. He had a good run for the Brewers over a six outing stretch. Matt Holiday, Alan Craig, and Yadier Molina may have been responsible for a lot of damage tonight. Holiday with two hits and a walk, two RBIs. He scored three runs. And he rips that one into right center field. That's down for a hit. That'll be a leadoff single for Holiday and a three hit game for Matt Holiday tonight. Hit number 15 for the Cardinals. John Axford continues to have his problem. Four seam fastball. You can see it splits home play right in half down around mid thigh. And Holiday gives it a pretty good ride out there in right field. And now Alan Craig, who has three hits tonight. And the only time the Brewers retired him, he lined out to left. This Cardinal club has come to town swinging the bats. 27 hits in the first two games of the series. Scored six runs last night, all six in one inning. And that skips by Lucroy and Holiday into second base. So that'll be a wild pitch. And it's that curveball that Axter has been trying to get back. A couple of years ago, even September last year, really wasn't that consistent. But the the slider that was actually a slider, my mistake. Lucroy trying to square it up and not able to do it. Got to get that breaking ball working for John Axford. Into shallow center. And there is the first out for John Axford. One gone. Holiday still at second. That's far from the start of the basketball season. And for the Bucks, it just ended. But Fox Sports Wisconsin's Jesse Temple recently caught up with Badgers forward Sam Decker. See how he's planning on improving from his freshman year. Read Jesse's story at FoxSportsWisconsin.com. Sudden Sam. He's a big Brewers fan, Sam Decker. Probably tuning in tonight. Every time I go uh, do a Badgers game, he and uh, Zach Showalter, all they want to do is uh, talk about the Brewers, the hot stove league in yeah. the basketball season. And Sam's a big Brewers fan. Have him come up. Maybe he can help you with his uh, with your three throws. You know, I would uh, offer a, a, a ticket or a booth visit, but. You know that's probably against some kind of NCAA rule, so you got to be careful. They're pretty strict. Yeah. And you never know where they're where they're watching. Yeah, they are. They're tough. So if he wants to pay for a ticket and pay the substantial fee for a booth visit, then he can do that. <laughs> that was your foul shot, anyway. Uh, I could shoot the free throws. That's about it. Rebounding is a struggle for you. Rebounding though. is a big problem. Yeah, I'm just the opposite. I can't shoot. I can't dribble. I can clear out the paint though a little bit. There's <laughs> <laughs> a breaking ball for a strike. Getting down to the other end of the yeah. uh, court, kind of a challenge as well. Yeah, of all the disciplines in basketball, I'd say uh, passing, shooting, dribbling would be uh, not very good for me. Guarding. What's left? Exactly. Free throw shooting. That's what I'm saying. Have him come up. Put one of those nerf hoops up in the back and he can help you out. No, we should put something like that in here. I would like that. Blow off a little steam, you know, the little nerf horse. <laughs> Say hello to our buddy Mike Kelly. Watching the broadcast tonight, staying up late, way past his bedtime. Now, there's a 
We got a lot of room up here in the booth. I could see a little see right here. See, put the hand in the basket right here. The gooseneck. Yeah. In basketball, theory, basketball in, analysis from yeah, Bill Schroeder. In theory, that's how it works. I'd like to see you on a Bucks broadcast. I've done it. Of, yeah. I've been on a Bucks instructional. It was a couple <laughs> of years Have ago. You really? Yeah. Wow. Me and Johnny Mack were doing the pick and roll. Who was the picker? I can't imagine you doing any of the rolling. I, I was rolling. It was a uh, Paskey. <laughs> Molina. I made him look bad too. <laughs> he bounces to Gonzalez. That's like weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. Of course, you know I I got open quickly, but I <laughs> dropped the <a> pass. <laughs> Lobster claw. Right. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry I missed that. Was that before the tweeting days? Because I really would like to have uh, seen that. You're so good at baseball instructionals. They ask you to go on the hardwood. huh? Yeah, it was fun. They gave me a Bucks warm up. Did you keep it? They wouldn't let me. I mean, we weren't even off the air yet, and Pasky's <laughs> ripping it off my back. Yeah. Would have been nice to keep, you know, hang around. I mean, for the effort. That was fun. And Johnny Mack has done a baseball instructional. We've had Paskey out here. We've also had Buzz Williams. Marquette coach. Uh -huh. Everybody's waiting on the Craig Council instructional. That's. That's in the works. Going to be a long wait. Oh and two to David Freeze and the Axeman misses great play back there by Lucroy. Well, you'd love to see that effort by the Brewer catcher. Axford certainly appreciates it. Look how far outside this pitch is. About midway on that batter's box for the left hander, and Luke Corey able to scoot out there and knock it down. Well, it looks like Axford is wild, but getting the breaking ball down and down in the dirt has been actually a priority. Been hanging too many this year. We'd like to see a few swings and misses. Two balls, two strikes on freeze. Brewers will have the middle of their order coming up. Another good block by Luke Croy. Freeze doesn't bite this time. Those are like hitting home runs for catchers. Saves a run. It should be a stat. I agree. They should. Uh, He'll log that somehow, some kind of a statistic. They have a statistic for everything else, don't they? Catcher saves. Yeah. Three and two on freeze. And a swing and a miss. There's the pitch he's looking for. Slider in the dirt. Axford strikes out freeze. A scoreless night.
of the ninth inning. Ricky Weeks ready to lead off. Yeah, been a rough go for the Brewers here. Still looking for the long ball in this series. They hit 10 in the Pirates series. They have 34 now for the season on the Powerball home run count. The Brewers have done most of their heavy lifting at home this year. 26 of their home runs have come at Miller Park. So Weeks will lead off. Cardinals go back to their bullpen. They've gotten two scoreless innings from a couple of guys making their major league debuts in Martinez and Manus. Now it's Fernando Salas, a former closer with the Cardinals, who will try to finish it all for St. Louis. Brewers lost last night 6 5, down 6 1 in the bottom of the ninth tonight. And Wainwright looming tomorrow. Wainwright and Gallardo tomorrow, the Brewers and the Cardinals on Fox National. Brewers did make a decision on their starting rotation with a couple of off days coming up on Monday and Thursday. Hiram Burgos will be in the bullpen for the next few days. And it's going to be Peralta and Loesch in that two game series against the Rangers. Pete Cosma takes care of weeks four out number one. So Peralta will pitch Tuesday and then Loesch on Wednesday. That'll make it a four man rotation here for the next week or so with Burgos available out of the bullpen through that series against Texas. And then the Brewers start a stretch on the road. They've got a three city road trip coming up. Brewers go to Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, and St. Louis. Lucroy in the hole. Cosma, a strong throw for out number two. Lucroy 0 for 3 tonight with an RBI. Drove in the only run with a sack fly in the sixth inning. Gomez extended his hitting streak tonight. A 10 game hitting streak, and he has 18 hits during the streak. Hitting 371, which is good enough to lead the league. When the Brewers get a Ramos Ramirez back, a big bat, Ramirez goes two for three. Played six innings tonight, got three at bats. But very little offense tonight. Been a lot of hits. Brewers have eight hits, but only one run. And this should do it. Beltron coming in. And the Cardinals go to five and one against Milwaukee this season. They win the first two games. Of this series, a final of 6 1 tonight. Miller wins his fourth game of the year. The rookie right hander, Los, suffers the loss and is now 1 and 3. We send it out to Craig Kishon. Time for Brewers Live. Craig, what do you have coming up for us? Well, another uh, tough loss for Milwaukee here at home. Three in a row they dropped at Miller Park. We'll talk about that. Also, get you set for game three. Tomorrow, we'll hear from the Brewer players inside the clubhouse. Ron Redicky as well. Brewers Live post game is coming up next.